Pathophysiology of burns To understand the pathophysiology of burns, one must look at the Jackson's model, which has three zones that describes the changes within the skin when a burn occurs. They are called the zone of coagulation, zone of stasis, and zone of hyperemia. The zone of coagulation is the point of maximal damage, irreversible skin damage, and coagulative necrosis or cell death occurs. The zone of stasis is characterized by decreased tissue perfusion, meaning it affects the delivery of blood throughout the circulatory or lymphatic system, and this zone may progress to full necrosis within 24 to 48 hours if not treated. Finally, the zone of hyperemia in which tissue perfusion is now increased and cells are expected to recover. In general, burns on the skin can either be superficial or new, and it is important to know this because understanding a depth of a burn is highly important, especially in treating a burn victim. In a superficial burn, the epidermis and the upper half of the dermis, which is the papillary layer, are damaged. The keratinocytes, which produces an important protein called keratin, that adheres cells to substances during inflammatory and allergic reactions, and macrophages that engulf pathogens and apoptic cells. These cells will then secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines that sets off an immune response. Cytokines are any number of substances such as interferon, interleukin, and growth factors. The cytokines stimulate nerve endings around the dermis, and the sensory nerve endings, like the nociceptors, which detects pain, an important feature in superficial burns. Cytokines can cause an increase in vascular permeability, which causes fluid and plasma to leak out from the blood vessel, which may lead to interstitial edema. As fluid leaks out, it can result in hypotension and also causes blisters, which is a small bubble on the skin filled with a fluid called serum. The blister may be ruptured causing the serum to leak out to the skin, giving the skin a moist appearance. The cytokine secreted will also cause vasodilation, causing further hypotension in much more severe cases. Vasodilation helps cause warmth in the area as well as plunging of the skin, which is when pressing on the burned skin. Blood will quickly fill up because of increase in blood flow to the area and In a deep burn, even more damage are observed in the epidermis and some parts of the dermis even extending all the way down to the hypodermis and in severe cases, the subcutaneous tissues and muscles and bones are affected as well. Deep burns can damage blood vessels in the skin with that, everything leaks out and there is a loss of blood supply resulting with a dry, non-blanchable surface and inelastic skin. Burns extending to the reticular, reticular layer of the dermis destroys the sensory nerve endings like the nociceptors. Initially, pain can be felt, but as these receptors are further damaged, hypoesthesia occurs, which is a decrease of sensation. The remaining functional blood vessels will react to the cytokines and will increase in vascular permeability and as explained earlier causes interstitial edema hypotension also follows as a result of the fluid leakage which occurs more in deep burns than superficial burns